there are three hormones that will make you store fat. We're talking directly into that cell. Three things that'll make you gain fat. Insulin is one of them, but I've got two other pretty unique ones that you probably haven't heard of before. And when you know exactly what they are, it's gonna reframe how you look at your overall diet. So listen carefully and please do not skip through this video because you have to understand the entirety of it for everything to click. You are tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel with new videos Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time and a plethora of other videos throughout the rest of the week as well. Make sure you hit that red subscribe button and then please hit that funky little bell icon. That way you turn on notifications, be part of the notification squad, and know whenever I post a new video or go live. All right, let's get going. The first one is one that you know of. Doesn't really need much of an explanation. It's insulin. But let's break it down a little bit more because I feel like insulin gets a bad rap as being the only fat storing hormone. It's not necessarily a fat storing hormone, but it is the absorptive hormone in general. Okay, it's the job of insulin to tell our cells to open up and be receptive to whatever nutrients are floating through the bloodstream. So if insulin is elevated, if insulin is on, the cells are there with wide open arms to absorb whatever is floating through the bloodstream, good, bad, or ugly. Okay, so insulin can be our best friend, but insulin can also be our worst enemy. If we eat a bunch of carbohydrates and we spike our insulin, and then we consume a bunch of fat too, then that fat's gonna shuttle right on in through the open door that insulin opened. Okay, so that's why insulin can be bad. But insulin is not the end all be all, so let's not waste a lot of time on that. Let's talk about the two more unique ones, but more importantly, let's talk about how you can get around this issue overall. The next one I want to talk about is something called ASP, acylation stimulating protein. This is a really unique one. It's the job of ASP to essentially synthesize triglycerides. Okay, triglycerides are the storage form of fat. So when you consume fat, believe it or not, you do actually store a good chunk of it if you are at least in a caloric surplus. So yes, that means even if you're on keto, if you overeat your fats, then yes, those fats can get stored as fat relatively easily. And it's because of this ASP, this acylation stimulating protein, I'm just gonna to refer to it as ASP from now on, but this ASP does indirectly also trigger an insulin spike. You see, when we eat fats, we release ASP, and ASP tells the body to store these fats that we consumed. But in the process, this ASP also spikes insulin just like a carb would. So even though fats don't turn on insulin, fats turn on ASP, which then travels and walks down the road and turns on insulin itself. So indirectly, we do spike our insulin and store fat just by eating fat. But there's another unfortunate side effect of an ASP spike. When we consume fat and we spike our ASP, we downregulate what's called lipolysis within a cell. When we downregulate lipolysis, that's a fancy way of saying we turn off fat burning inside the cell. So we turn fat storage on and we turn fat burning off. Okay, now again, this goes away with time and it really only plays a big effect if you're in a caloric surplus. So if you're just, you know, you're still in a deficit and you're still losing weight, it's not gonna play a big role, but it's important that we know. Which leads me into the next one. This one is called GIP, glucose dependent insulinotropic peptide. Now GIP is also related with fat. So when we consume fat, we have a GIP spike. This GIP spike occurs, it's epicenter in our small intestine. So our upper intestinal tract, we consume fat, our small intestine recognizes it and it triggers this GIP. And it's the job of this GIP to go again and tell fat to be stored in a specific area. But it is a little bit more short term. You see, a GIP only really has an effect for about seven minutes within the body. So if you are already in a caloric surplus, let's say you've already eaten more calories than you should at a given point in time, then you overeat on the fats. Well, that's when GIP is gonna be a problem. So it's like specifically when you're overeating. Now GIP also has a big role in conjunction with hyperglycemia. So what that means is GIP becomes a big problem when glucose is also high. So when you're combining fats and carbs, is when GIP causes you to store fat. So it looks something like this. You consume fat, it spikes GIP. GIP makes you store fat, okay? That's not good. But if you consume carbs, you also spike GIP. But when you consume fats and carbs, you have a double spike of the GIP because you have fat spiking GIP, then you have carbs spiking GIP, 
but you also have carbs already spiking insulin like they're supposed to. So forget all the complexity of this for a second and just take my word for it. If you overeat the fats, it's going to cause you to store fat. Okay, you can't just eat a ton of fats and expect it to turn you into a fat burning machine. It's not that simple. Like a lot of, honestly, the keto zealots out there will tell you it is. There is a way that you can get around this a little bit though. Omega-3s are very unique. Okay, so if you get your fats from good quality meat sources or good quality fish, you're not gonna have as much of this issue. That potentially means that you can overeat a little bit more, have a little bit more flexibility if you're eating higher quality food. So for example, omega-3s don't store as fat nearly as much as other fats do. Omega-3 excess ends up contributing to the phospholipid bilayers. So we're talking about like cell membranes and things like that because omega-3s have more of a cellular function rather than a storage function within our body. So you don't need to just pop a bunch of omega-3 capsules, you just eat high quality sources of food. And for those of you that know my channel know that I'm a huge fan of ButcherBox. So if you want good organic grass-fed, grass-finished beef and grass-finished meat in general that is high in omega-3s naturally delivered right to your doorstep, you're gonna to wanna to check them out down in the description. The cool thing about ButcherBox, it is legitimately grass-fed and grass-finished. And studies have shown that grass-finished beef has significantly higher amounts of omega-3 in it. We're talking a huge difference between normal beef. So if we get meat that has high omega-3s, we can eat more of it without the potential of it getting stored as fat. So again, ButcherBox delivers it right to your doorstep, cheaper than the grocery store, so make sure you check them out. They're a huge sponsor of this channel and there's special discounts for anyone that watches my videos, so take advantage of it. Okay, let's break this down a little bit more though. When we look at how carbs store as fat, we realize that carbs themselves aren't causing us to really gain fat directly. Carbs don't turn into fat super efficiently. There is a process within the body called de novo lipogenesis where carbs get turned into fat, but it's actually a pretty inefficient process. You think about it from a, like a legitimate standpoint, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Why? It takes a lot of effort to turn a starch into a completely different compound and turn it into fat. It does happen, but it's complex. So here's an interesting study that breaks it down and puts it into some simple terminology. So the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition published a study that took a look at a few women. Now with this study, they took a 96 hour period of time where they overfed these test subjects. Okay, they overfed them by 50%. Basically, they just gave them a little bit extra food predominantly in the way of carbohydrates. What they found at the end of this 96 hour period is there was on average a 282 gram increase in body fat. Okay? Now, only four grams of that body fat came from de novo lipogenesis. What that means is that even though they gained 282 grams of body fat, only four came from carbs. The other 278 came from somewhere else, came from something else. So what that's telling us is that even when we overeat, it's not the carbs themselves that get stored and cause the issue. Carbs might have an indirect effect by spiking insulin, but we're not overeating the carbs and the carbs are making us fat. The carbs are just a catalyst. It's a lot easier to store excess fat. Again, let me explain it like this. If you overeat and you overeat a bunch of carbs, those carbs might mess you up and it's gonna suck, but those extra carbs are less likely to get stored as fat than excess fat is because dietary fat that you consume is already molecularly so similar to our storage form of fat that it just makes sense for it to store it so much easier. Whereas glucose or carbs are already broken down into fuel. Why would our body store that when it's complicated to store it, when it can just burn it? it just, it's gonna store the excess fat because it's a lot easier to store it. So again, with great power comes great responsibility. You're eating a lot of fats. Okay, that's great. It's good for your brain. It's good for your, it's good for your physique, but don't overdo it, okay? You still have to keep it within control. It's not just fair game to eat however much fat you want. And if you are gonna eat fat, you are gonna go to town, at least try to get some good quality meat in the process. As always, make sure you keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you in the next video.